Sunday after church, we, we were just kind of telling stories from childhood and stuff, and or a long time ago. And and I told one I remembered that it kind of goes along with what I want to talk about today. Um, I used to be kind of type A, you know, kind of high geared type person. With, Lots of energy, I suppose. I kind of <laughs> I ran out of gas or something somewhere through the years. But back in the time, most of my life, I worked about 60 or 65 hours a week as an average. A few times a little lower than that, a lot of times a little more than that. And I was in Florida. Some of you that were here Sunday, you know, as we were talking around after church, you know what's coming. But I was in Florida a number of years ago when... Um, before we had cell phones, and I was there for several days taking some training at the um, Asbury campus in Orlando, Florida, and I got on the, the phone and called my wife to see how she's doing and check up on the family, and Jeremy answered the phone. He was just grade school someplace in there, and Jeremy answered the phone, and I gave him a message to, to, um, to tell Sue and someplace in the message, he, he kind of had dawned on him that I wasn't there. And he, he was like, Dad, where are you? And I said, I'm, I'm in Florida. And he said, how long have you been gone? <laughs> so I'd been gone at least three days probably at that time. And he just had not noticed that I was gone yet. So I don't know if that says that Jeremy doesn't notice stuff or if that says I wasn't home very much as I should be. You and I were made to have a, a natural rhythm in life. I don't know what that rhythm is necessarily or if it's the same for all of us. You know, uh, there's an old joke, an old saying that said, we, we Americans, we worship our work, we work at our play, and we play at our, at our worship. And that, there may be some truth to that, I don't know. It's awfully easy to get out of balance and the world around us seems to, seems to knock us out of balance. If we can't say no, more and more things are added to our plate all the time, and we don't have that time for rest. So I kind of dedicate today to just a quest for rest, and a quest for worship, and a quest for some useful work that benefits others, and most of all, for a quest for balance on how this is the proper godly way to balance all those things. Of course, the, the best place to start is with Scripture. Right there at the very beginning in the Ten Commandments, one of the Ten Commandments is that we are to remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days we shall labor and do all of our work, but the seventh day is a holy day set apart for God. It is a Sabbath day because God finished creation in six days and on the seventh day he rested. And we are to rest also, and we're not to work, nor our men servants, nor our maid servants. I've never had a servant. Um, nor our animals are to work on that seventh day. And later we find that that day was made for men because we have this need to, to have rhythm in our lives and this need to rest. So that's probably the best place to start right there in the beginning. Paul writes in Romans, um, and he kind of complicates matters in Romans when he's doing this. In Romans 14, he's writing to this church that is predominantly, you know, he didn't plant the church, he didn't know the people, it's in the Gentile capital of Rome. A lot of the people didn't have Jewish background. And there's this question of the Sabbath and whether or not we should honor the Lord the seventh day or whether or not we should honor the Lord the same every day because every day belongs to the Lord. So Paul writes, um, some judge one day to be better than another, while others judge all days to be alike. Let all, everyone be fully convinced in their own minds. Those who observe the day observe it in honor of the Lord. And then in Colossians, uh, Paul is doing something similar to that. And in Colossians, Paul writes this. Therefore, do not let anyone condemn you 
in matters of food or drink or the observing of festivals or new moons or Sabbaths. These are only a shadow of what is to come, but the substance belongs to Christ. Now Jesus, he was accused of not honoring the Sabbath, but he, treated, he healed people on the Sabbath. He, you know, his disciples went through the, the fields and grabbed some grain and ate it on the Sabbath, which was harvesting. But Jesus treated every day holy, like it was a Sabbath day. And then in the early church, they don't help us too much. The early church began observing not the seventh day of the week, which was the Sabbath day, but the first day of the week, which was the Lord's day. And instead of having a, a day of rest set aside and quiet every Saturday, every Sunday, they had a new Easter of celebration. Like every Sunday was Easter because every Sunday was the Lord's day because on the first day of the week, the Lord rose. How do you find balance? How do you celebrate a Sabbath? How do you balance rest with work, with worship? What gets, uh, when you get out of balance, what gets dropped? Work, worship, rest? How can you bring yourself more into balance? But this is a question where we as Christians can help each other. There's a place you can comment down below this, and I just encourage you to, to give us a comment and tell us how you find balance, or where you struggle with balance, or how you balance those scriptures to apply to you and to us in our daily lives. We could probably benefit from some sort of a dialogue here, but, but if you decide not to, uh, you know, post anything publicly, at least consider and think about these questions I'm asking. We have a, a few days to go before we meet together again and worship on, on Sunday. May God watch over you. And may the Holy Spirit guide you into balance. And if your life is out of balance, may the Holy Spirit nudge at your life and, and call you back to balance.